Hi, I'm Allie and you are joining me in my backyard where we are going to be learning about birds today. I hope that I can teach you about some of the birds that you may see in your backyard and I hope that I interest you enough that you yourself might have take a few minutes out of what I know are busy days and sit down and watch some birds. Before we get into bird watching and what that all involves, I want to talk to you a little bit about birds in general. There are a few characteristics that all birds have, which classifies them as birds and not as reptiles or mammals. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are feathers. Bird, all birds have feathers and these feathers help birds fly, camouflage, and attract mates. The next thing all birds have in common are that they lay eggs. All birds lay at least one clutch a year. Most birds can lay two clutches and you have a very rare occasion where birds can lay up to three clutches of eggs a year. The next thing that all birds have in common are beaks. And these beaks can vary by species depending on the types of foods that they eat. If you compare uh, bird of prey beaks to parrot beaks to uh, songbird beaks, they all have different shapes and forms and purposes based on the foods that they naturally normally eat. The next characteristic that we'll talk about are wings. All birds have wings and these wings help them fly. They also need something else, which is the next characteristic, uh, an adaptive skeletal system. And this allows birds to have a lighter skeleton okay. system than what we have or what reptiles have because their bones are hollow and light and enable the bird to lift and fly off of the ground, which makes it the only animal capable of flight. So now that we know a little bit about what makes a bird a bird, we are going to go see a setup that I have in my backyard that I use to bird watch, and that involves bird feeders. But you don't need bird feeders in order to be able to bird watch. Really, all you need is either shrubs, you can use plants or trees, or uh, even birds can nest in your backyard if you have holes in fencing or a lamp post sitting outside of your house or uh, maybe some old uh, a wood pile or something like that. Birds tend to find places to make nests wherever. So we're going to go look at the setup that I have and see if we can see some birds. Here we are at our first viewing spot. You'll notice there are feeders sitting under a tree with some rather large branches which provide the perfect perching spot for some birds. So we're going to sit back and see what birds come to the feeder and then I will give you some information on each of the different species that we see. So let's sit back and see what we can see. The bird you saw in this last clip is known as a purple finch, which can be confused quite often with your everyday house finch. They both have the brilliant raspberry coloring on their head and back. The house finch is just a little bit paler. The purple finches are mainly herbivores, but they will eat some bugs occasionally. The uh, purple finches are quite aggressive, but not as aggressive as your house finch. These guys like to make their nest in trees of conifers and uh, some interesting facts about them is that they can use their tongue to reach nectar and flowers without having to eat the whole flower. And they sometimes will sing songs and add other species of bird songs in with their own song. The oldest purple finch on record is 14 years old. The 
the last bird you just saw, I hope you identified as a blue jay feeding on the ground. Both the males and females are brilliantly blue colored. They do like to eat uh, lots of insects. These guys are omnivores, which means that they will eat small, dead, or injured vertebrates. They also enjoy eating insects and seeds. You can find them in Pennsylvania year round. And a fun fact is they lower their crest when they're in peace, so either eating or tending to their nest or feeling non-threatened. And the black bridal patch around their face is unique to each individual blue jay, meaning that they're just like our fingerprints. And the oldest recorded blue jay is around 26 years old. you were able to identify this last bird as a woodpecker. Specifically, this is a red belly woodpecker, even though it has the red on its head instead of its belly. This bird can be confused with the red-headed woodpecker, which is a much more rare species around this part. Uh, the female and male are similarly colored, but the female is lacking the red cap on its head. They can be found in forests, and they can sometimes be found in wetlands the further south you go. They are mainly insectivores, which means they eat insects, uh, but in the fall and winter, they stick to a diet of nuts and seeds. The tapping sound that you normally associate with woodpeckers are a way of communication between males and females during breeding season. They hollow, they make their nest in hollowed out old uh, dead trees and they return to the same nest site year after year sometimes using the same hole or other times carving a new hole right below the old one from the previous year a fun fact about woodpeckers are they can stick their tongue out two inches past their beak and the oldest red belly woodpecker on record is about 12 years old The last bird we just saw at the feeder is known as a tufted titmouse. The tufted titmouse can be, can be recognizable by the crest at the top of its head. It has its blue-gray coloring on its wings and back, and it has a black spot at the base of its beak. These guys are mainly insectivores. However, if they do decide to eat a seed, they're going to find the biggest seed they can find, take it and carry it away to a branch and use that hammer-like beak to chip away at the seed into more edible sized pieces. When these guys build their nest, they like to line the nest with hair 
So the hair that you pull off from a dog or a horse or even your own hair that's floating around the yard, they'll find that, take that, and put it into their nest. If they can't find any of that, they've been known to actually pluck hair from live breathing animals. The oldest recorded titmouse is 13 years old. bold color bird that we just viewed is known as a rose-breasted grosbeak. You can tell that these are grosbeaks by the red uh, triangle shape on their chest from the males and the females are a brown white streaked color. They can be found at forest edge which is where we saw ours at the edge of the woods. They are insectivores during breeding, breeding season but when they migrate they forage mostly on berries. They're present in Pennsylvania only during breeding season, and then they migrate. The birds sing a song to establish territory and also to attract mates. The females will actually drive off other females that are approaching their mates. These birds build flimsy nests, and you can see the eggs through the actual nest. Uh, male grosbeaks actually take time incubating the eggs and the oldest gross beak uh, recorded was 12 years old. Were you able to guess the bird in that last clip? I'll give you a hint. They normally are found scurrying up and down and sideways over trees and main branches. If you thought nuthatch, you would be correct. They look like black cap chickadees, but they have less black over their face. Instead, they just have a cap and a nape that is that dark black gray color. The females have a lighter gray uh, cap and nape. These guys mate for life and they are very territorial. They also store food for the winter. They will nest in natural tree cavities, but they also can use old woodpecker holes, even though the woodpeckers are normally bigger than them. They don't seem to mind the bigger nest. The oldest uh, nuthatch was recorded at nine years old. Move down to our second viewing spot. This viewing spot is a little bit more open and more on the edge line of the woods rather than under any one specific tree. So we're gonna sit here and see if we see any different birds than what we did up by the house. And I'll do the same and tell you a little bit about each bird as they come.
bird we're going to see is another type of woodpecker. It looks very close to the red-headed, red-belly woodpecker, excuse me, but it is actually a downy woodpecker. And the difference is the downy woodpecker has a little red spot on the base of its head or neck area. And that is only seen in the males where the females look exactly like the males, but they don't have the red. These guys can be found in open woodlands or along streams. They're insectivores, but occasionally they will eat berries. They don't sing songs like normal birds. Instead, they drum loudly on wood and old metal, which can actually be heard uh, up to a half a mile away, depending on the material that they're drumming on. They use their tail to lean on while they're looking up and down trees for bugs and they build their nest in dead tree cavities. I bet everybody knows what this last bird it was. If you guess cardinal, you are absolutely correct. These birds are known for their crazy protective territorial instincts and have been known to spend several hours knocking into windows of houses, cars, uh, bumpers, anything that is reflective and looks like it is posing a threat to their nest. The cardinal is also the state bird of seven states the male is brightly colored red and the female is a dull red or brown, depending on how the light hits them. They are ground foragers, even though you see this, you saw this one uh, eating out of a bird nest. And during breeding season, they move in pairs, whereas in the winter, they move in big flocks. These birds are omnivores, just like your birds, uh, blue jays, and they feed their uh young, mostly insects.
this past bird that we just saw is also another pretty common bird found in Pennsylvania. It is the goldfinch. And the goldfinch are super active birds flitting from branch to branch. You'll know, to, you'll know the bird by the male's bright yellow coloring. The female is still yellow, but a very uh, paler version of this. They like to live in overgrown areas, open flood plains, and weedy fields. They are herbivores, and they are actually one of the most strictest herbivores in the bird world. They only ingest insects if it is on accident and um, avoid them at all costs. Uh, some interesting facts about the goldfinch are they they are the state bird of three different states and they are the only finch that molts two times a year and that means that they shed their feathers and regrow them uh, two times a year and they don't lose their feathers all at once uh, but over a span of one to two weeks they'll replace all of their feathers with a new batch the oldest uh, known Goldfinch lived up to 10 years. The bird you just saw foraging on the ground is another type of woodpecker. This is known as a flicker. Uh, this flicker is a northern yellow shafted flicker. In the west, instead of having a yellow coloring, they have red coloring under their wings. The males have the two kind of teardrop shapes right under their eyes where the female does not have that attribute. These birds are strictly insectivores, meaning that they will forage for insects on the ground, digging and tunneling for ants and termites in the grass, as well as dead and rotting branches. They uh, ha have their nests the same places that other woodpeckers do. Uh, in the springtime during mating seasons, they actually have fencing duels, is what it's called with, with their beaks kind of how you picture a fencer fencing. Some interesting facts are this is one of the only woodpecker species to North America that actually does migrate. While you can find the flicker here year round, those that are in the more northern part of North America will fly south for the winter and uh, will go back up north again for breeding seasons. They the oldest uh, recorded flicker is about nine years old.
last bird we viewed was a house sparrow. These birds can be found pretty much anywhere where humans live in cities and neighborhoods, in the country, uh, anywhere, really. They're here year round, uh, but they're not a native species. They're actually known for displacing native birds from their nest, which upsets some people. Other people don't seem to care. And they are a pretty aggressive species of birds. They nest in man-made structures made of coarse or dry vegetation. They also like taking dust baths and will actually defend their little dust bath area uh, quite vigilantly. Uh, there is also a pecking order when these birds form flocks, kind of like how chickens have a pecking order. And the oldest bird uh, recorded had, was 15 years old. And in just a second, I'm going to try and show you a nest of a house sparrow. And as you notice, it nested in an old dryer vent attached to the side of the house. And in it, you can see some kind of dried up moss, some branches, uh, maybe a little bit of tarp, uh, things like that. There is a female in there, and there may or may not be eggs. I haven't been able to get a good view inside the nest. I don't want to disturb it too much. Uh, but there's a nest, proving that <laughs> sparrows will nest just about anywhere. That's all I have for you today. I hope I was able to teach you at least one new thing about birds that you didn't know before. Stay tuned for more classes at South Mountain YMCA camps. Until we see each other, keep the fires burning, stay safe, and have a good rest of your day.